But what's really pivotal to learn is how you hold the pad. So when we started to develop PadCon, he's giving me a frontal shot. So understand that this frontal target represents the front of the face. So if I'm stood in front of this frontal target with some kind of light index here, then this is the chest, this is the face. So that is this. Yes, make sense? Yeah. Yeah. All right. <coughs> Rather than holding the pad outward like this as he hits to sustain an injury, he's going to keep it here. And he's going to keep his hand behind his wrist. Right? So now what he's creating is like a, a compression system. Yeah, that, that can bleed off the energy. And it's going in the direction that's natural. He's got the hand here so that this doesn't close too fast. And he's got control of it. But there's none of this thing going on. It's all this. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? The other thing that this allows me to do as well is focus on depth of target. So if I was hitting surface contact, it would stop here. But ideally, my target is going to be where the shoulder is. So I would see the depth. Right? So if you just turn around and look at this board quickly. Yeah. What we're working off the idea of, for the ideal impact dynamics, is what makes a preemptive shot reliably a knockout shot? What are the variables, right? Now, if you ask somebody that is a natural knockout specialist that hits people fucking hard and they fall down from very young, you know, they won't necessarily know why they can do that. They just know that they can do that, right? They've never given it any thought. And quite often, people that can do that will say, natural hitters are born, they're not made, which is bullshit, right? The person that you're best likely to learn how to hit hard from is the person that previously couldn't and really had to strive to learn how because they've now identified the whys and hows of how that guy does that well. And he won't know because it was given to him easy. Does that make sense? Mm. Use the same analogy in bodybuilding. So without the pharmaceutical assistance, if you have... The, the guy that's just a natural genetic freak. He comes from a bloodline where all he's got to do is look at the weight and he'll grow. <laughs> and he can eat fucking shit diet and McDonald's and then just pack it on. That's the worst person that you can ask for his routine. The person that you want to ask is the hard gainer. He's the skinny little uh, ectomorphic, very fast met metabolism person that struggled to put on even an ounce of muscle. They had to go through trial and error and really learn how to do it properly because it's a science. And when they develop what they want to develop, non-pharmaceutical, that's the one you want to get the advice from. Does that make sense? Yeah. So same analogy applied to somebody that couldn't necessarily previously hit hard or hard enough, learn how to. These are the traits that I identified. So, not talking necessarily in a fight now, where I'm in a match fight and you know, I've got a mate range to throw the shot. Because here you are massively aware that I'm going to try to hit you and you're going to try and stop me and hit me, right? We're talking of the context of street pre-fight dynamic, where you are working, first of all, from the idea that I don't want to fucking be here, leave me alone, right? In which case, the posture that I'm going to deliver my shot from is going to be a non-violent posture. It's going to start from an unobtrusive position that looks like the bank, I don't want no trouble, just fucking leave me alone. Like, I, don't, I don't want that. In which case, he's going to be like, fuck, it all like this, like, I'm like this. But in this kind of context, I'm playing his adrenaline. <laughs> so I'm kind of disarming his aggressive adrenaline that wants to make me hypervigilant and scared by showing him what I want on. So it's, it's deceptive. Yeah. So in my experience, the best way to land a knockout preemptive shot is from an unobtrusive, non-violent platform. that is quite comfortable that I'm here with. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. As soon as that turns into this, yeah. or there's any incongruence that says, you know, if I say, look, I don't want any trouble, then my non-verbal body language, my voice, the tonality, volume, and pitch of my words, and the words I say, must all convey that message, I don't want no trouble. If I can do that, you'll be quite confident stood in front of me because I'm tickling your little cast of sugar ego. Do you understand? Yeah. But if it becomes incongruent, where I go to you, look, mate, I don't want no fucking trouble, right? Mm -hmm. well, it's incongruent now yeah. because my body language is showing that I do. Yeah. So a big part of your success to land a priority shot in the context of this is deception. And that's on obtrusive platform, right? Your whole entire practice <laughs> should take place from your dominant side and your non-dominant side. And you want to find your main artillery.
Now for me, what I found throughout my career, anything coming linear and straight off the left worked best for me. Conversely, anything from an angular and hooked off the right worked best for me. So if I was here and the person maybe shifted over to here, he walks, now it will change. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So I purposely worked everything on this line or this line. And early in my career, it was punching. I would punch, and then I had damage to my hands quite a lot. And then when I met my first combative instructor, Pete Robbins, he said, do what you're doing because it's working, but change the drill bit. And that's all I did. I just opened the hand, so my left cross become a, a palm, and my right hook become slap. And I got immediate success with it. I literally trained and got that advice on a Sunday, and following Friday and Saturday, I made both work. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's useful, it's got merit. So you want to find what your main artillery shot is, and that's the one you want to drill till you know it, and then drill till you own it. So remember what I said yesterday, you can't take everything to the level of mastery beyond unconscious competence, but you can take your main artillery to a level of mastery. So that's what you would practice, right? Yeah. So that would then, in this case, for me to switch it from would be my main artillery money shot, that's what I would use, yeah? So I would use my closest, most viable tool to the closest target. So you've heard that principle, closest weapon to nearest target? Yeah. Been around forever, right? None of, the, none of this shit's new. Well, I kind of prefer closest, most viable tool, because my closest tool from here is this eye jack. Yeah. It's inside your voice, it's lead foot. That's the closest. It's not the most viable for me because it doesn't feel mastered. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, in this case, then, my closest, most viable tool is going to be this palm shot or this straight shot. Yeah? So, the first two elements that need to be in play non violent posture, correct tool to correct target. That's viable for you. Next one I need is economy of motion. So, what I don't need to do is pull back to get extra distance to accumulate impact via velocity, yeah? And two reasons I don't want to do that. One, I don't need to do that. And second, it's telegraphic if I pull back, yeah? If I was going to throw, let's say, a slap, I'd throw it straight from my pocket to your ear roll, right? That's, that's where it's coming from. So I don't need to come out to come in. Conversely, though I'm going to see depth in target, I don't need to shed it two miles past you. So I'm going to cut out any superfluous uh, um, distance created here or here. In short, I want to keep the shot inside the box to my shoulders. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? So, closest weapon to nearest target, economy of movement, non telegraphic. These go hand in hand. The actual two things that are going to knock the bastard out are correct body mechanics, mm -hmm. so your impact dynamics either from a drop step or hip torque, which will allow weight transference of your entire, in my case, 94 kilos through my hand, not just the weight of my arm, right? By the correct range. So here's what I mean by the correct range. Right? If I purposely choose this range here, where the energy is spent, it's at 10. So if we take that to the pad, it will be surface contact. That's all it will be, because the energy is spent, right? So if this is zero, and this is 10, and this is five. Maybe this is 7.5, yes? I want to throw the shot so that I land on 7.5 or 2.5 to go through his head. Yeah. The key to knocking fuckers out is to hit through them, not at them, yeah? yeah. And if you look at some people, you know, take this kind of philosophy a lot further, people like Steve Morris, who's fucking martial genius, right? He'll talk about how it's important not just to hit in, but down and through down and through, particularly if you're punching, get in and down, hurt him on the inside, impale him to the floor, that kind of thing. The key commonality is depth, hit through, not at, mm. yes? So to recap, you start from a non-violent posture, yeah? Closest, most viable tool to target for you. Economy of movement, non-telegraphic. Correct body mechanics simply means I either drop weight or I hit its walk. Correct range simply means I hit through the target, not at the target. So in the case of this pad, where he's holding it, I'm not hitting at the pad, I'm hitting through the pad. I want to physically make him shift weight. Yeah? Another thing to bear in mind when you feel the target, 
because we are looking at the context of dealing with uh, violence pre-fight on the street. So you want to understand pre-fight, pre-fight before the fight, the ritual, in the fight, the fight, post-fight, after the event. Yes? Yeah. Well, pre-fight, somebody comes up to you and they stood there like this, you know what they're telling you? It's on. You're not going to wait, you're going to go. That's not what they're doing. So imagine the context of it, giving you some shit, and it's on the shift way. Well, now it's a pre threat cue for you to preempt. But if you stand here, the shifted weight, as you feed the pad to me, your training means no longer recognize shifted body weight. So when you, when you feed an MMA, you feed, or a boxer, you feed in this way. Even if you're isolating that shot, you're feeding this way from a braced position. But that's sport. Context of sport, that's fine. But in the street, this means shit. You understand? It's a stand parallel. Now we're in parallel, and I hit the depth. He is forced to actually shift weight. Right? Here, just like, he's forced to shift weight. And of course, your target is, is, is evident. So just then, that first shot is skewed. Right? So you want to hit the center of the target, the center of the target, and through. So my objective is to make this to touch that. Yeah? So to recap again, start from a non violent posture. So the person holding the pad for you is your coach now. He is looking at you. He is looking. Is your, pad, is your position a little bit like this, or is it natural and intrusive? Yeah? Closest weapon to his target is your new economy of motion. Or did you pull back? Did, did you go further than the knee? So if you threw a palm strike, it's good. Right? I, I want to hit in and out. In and out. Piston. I must come back as fast as it went out so that I could repeat it should I need to. What I don't want to do is leave it there. And what I most certainly don't want to do is glance off. Right? So you as a feeder is looking for that shit. Right? If they are telegraphic, several ways you can be telegraphic. Right? So use some of this short you come in. So I'm gonna hit him on the chin with this punch. Right? And I want you to tell me what I do that's telegraphic. Right? So first form the weapon. Form the weapon. And that applies to a palm if I do something goofy like this, doesn't it? Right? I pull back. Right? Grimace. Grimace. What about this? Fell. Slight lean. I match shit out. I'm going to go from here to here. Yeah. So that's what you're looking for as a feeder. Did he sway? Did he pull back? Did he form the weapon? Did he grimace? Did he give me any tell whatsoever that said that's coming? How I used to iron that out was I would do the thousand strikes, and then before I would go to work, put on the old black and white, clip on the tie, and I'd stand in front of the mirror, and I would literally just go, what's this thing? And I'll watch to see if there's any tell from me at all. Any tell. And I'll probably do it hundreds of times. So I got comfortable with that. Yeah, you ain't seeing that. You ain't stopping that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I went from somebody that had to learn how to hit to somebody that had the thinking of, don't make me hit you with this. You don't want me to hit you with this. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that comes from that flight time. But these are the things I identified, and these are the things I, I'm now. Correct range through the target. Final one is intent. Hit with bad intentions. Learn to hit with hurt and hate. You can instantaneously make somebody hit harder if there's bad intent behind it. So they did a, um, something I know in the US, they've done a, a test, and it was on one of those pressure per square inch pads when you hit them. And you had somebody, technical example, boom, just hit it. And you hit, had somebody hit as hard and fast as they could, just hit it. And then you had somebody hit it, but either voicing out loud the word, or sounding the word in their head, cut. Right? <coughs> cut! With bad intent, literally. And that shot, reliably, was the highest of all. So bad intention is important. If I said to you, you know, slap this, no, I don't want to fucking slap it. And then I maybe did something to pitch, maybe I shot your dog. Horrible example, but maybe I did. How hard would you slap that now? Do you know what I mean? 
Intention changes everything. Intention, violent intention, is what makes people scary. Violent intention is what we innately fear in criminal. Particularly if you are not that way. Does that make sense? So add bad intent. Hit it with hurt and hate. Hit it like fucking life depending on it. Right. So what you're going to do is you're going to make a line and you're going to pick your selected preemptive strike. It could be a punch, it could be a slap, it could be an elbow, it could be a headbutt, it could be ever what you want. Right? And you're going to go through these things. Checklist, non violent posture. Tick. Viable targets, closest weapon. Closest weapon to the most viable target. Tick. Economy of motion. After you've done a few, tick. Correct range, non telegraphic, body mechanics, add in 10. Do you understand what I want? Yeah. yeah. Is, this, is this the pad for you uh, taking the student for Yeah, so you'd be pad, it's an interactive relationship. So anything that you don't see present, you add. So for example, if it's just hitting it, where's the intent? Where's the intent? Now straight away, we're only going to do about five to 10 and then switch. There's no warm up. Five to 10, every single one of those between one and 10 is thrown like your life depends on it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mix work? Yeah.